Hello, and welcome to Let Me Tell You a Story podcast, produced by ED Media. Today's story is from the best-selling novel, Cabin Love, Letters of Fate, a love story, written by Latoya Monique Warren. Chapter Wolf. The Letter. When I got back to my place I dropped my bags off quickly. Sash and Pete was meeting me there to talk about what happened at my shop in downtown. After the weekend with Lacey nothing they were going to say to me was going to upset me. I couldn't get her off my mind. I wasn't comfortable with the way she started acting on her last night. There was something wrong with her, but she didn't want to tell me. I believe that once I offer my ear and you don't respond then my business is only what you want me know and nothing more. I sat on my recliner and flipped through Friday and Saturday's mail, nothing important. My phone buzzed, and I was hoping it was Lace telling me she was okay. It wasn't, it was China asking when we would see each other. I put the phone down. China was sexy, and beautiful half black half Korean, and a body like she was straight from the south. When you look at her, you can see she is black in her more than Korean. Her curves were on point and her attitude also. She would curse you out at the drop of a dime, real feisty. I kept her as my eye candy when we hit the clubs. Men drooled all over her, and I let them as I watched from a distance. As long as they didn't touch. China was good to chill with, and she had my back. Whenever I called her for anything she came with no questions asked. She was managing my uptown shop for years, and I trusted her with a lot. She showed me great loyalty. Her sex game is average, and nothing to brag about, but her loyalty is what keeps me connected to her. She was my number one chick until I met Lacey last year. Once I seen Lacey knew I wanted her, she was beautiful but her beauty was different. It was something about this woman that attracted me to her way, before she said anything to me. I remember when I first saw Lacey. Pete dragged me downtown to a live gallery where photographers, and artists were showing their portraits. I'm from the streets, so when he first proposed it to me I was like no, thank you, this shit is too top shelf for me. Then he reminded me that these pictures were going to hang in our last shop we was opening on the south side and although I wasn't into art and pictures I wanted to have and say on what goes on my shop's walls. My barbershops were like my babies. I nurtured each one of them the same. I took my businesses seriously, and sometimes as a boss you have to do things just for the sake of the business. My driver dropped us off that night in front of the gallery. I knew by the line that was wrapped around the corner, none of these people looked like us. But that didn't stop our mission. We don't stand on lines, so once Pete announced to the security who we were, the rope swung open, and we were escorted in. I heard whispers coming from the line. I assured Pete to remind the front desk that Karen and her sister was coming out tonight to give their opinions. Karen was my business partner, I trusted her with my life. We are childhood friends, ever since we were teenagers, everyone thought we were fucking. But Karen don't like dick. She's a lesbian, and her girlfriend is prettier than most my man's girls hands down. Karen is my ride or die, she is a great visionary, and handles the books. A dime has never been short in any of my stores with Karen's expertise and sassiness. And if a problem arises, she handles it. Then she'll let me know how she solved it. She was like a sister to me, it's nothing I wouldn't do for her. She was the one to give me the idea to open up other shops after my pops died. I was too wounded to make a decision, but with her aggressive nature we ventured off, and here we are. It must have been thousands of photos and pieces of art, although I didn't know what I was really looking at. Some of the shots, and art was nice. I separated from Pete when I saw camera lights flashing in the back. A live photo shoot was going on while the gallery was open season to the public. That's when I saw her. A cocoa beauty. She was relaxed, with black yoga pants on, a red t-shirt, her hair was in a ponytail and her sneakers matched her shirt. She was focused. I stood there in awe watching this woman direct, and orchestrate this shoot. When she turned around I seen that her eyes were beautiful, they were round, and light brown with a twinkle in them. I couldn't take my eyes off of her. I was used to half-naked women, parading around, looking for the next dude to fill their pockets with money right after they served them the same pussy they gave their homeboy the night before. I knew the game, and lived it day by day. What I was looking at was a breath of fresh air, she was different, she was beautiful, and she carried a confidence that I haven't seen the baddest chick carry in the clubs. I wanted her and I didn't care what it was going to take to get her. See something you like brother? Pete crept up behind me to see what I was looking at. Beauty at its finest, I spoke low without looking away from this cocoa complexion colored queen. You talking about Shorty snapping the pictures in the red, Pete asked surprisingly. Shh, man I want to hear what she's saying to them. 
Pete stood still for a moment. Hey Wolf, Shorty is cute but that's not your cup of tea man, he said shaking his head. No, she's not that, that is what I am admiring I spoke quietly. Look over there at baby in the blue dress Wolf, now she is bad as hell, and she checking you out, Pete said casually. Player, it's time for a change. These hoes out here only want whatever dude, that will throw them money, and take them shopping. I did that too much in my life already, I want something new, and different is what I am about now. When you grow up one day maybe you will feel that way too, I joked. Pete just sucked his teeth. Whatever you say boss, Pete replied. I never looked away from brown eyes, and then she smiled and I walked closer to the chute. Phil, let's take a 10 minute break. She was speaking to a white guy with dirty sneakers on, and grey sweatsuit. Everyone cleared the set and I saw an opening. She was drinking a bottle of water, looking at her cell phone as I approached the set. I see you like what you do young lady, I said. She looked up and her eyes were more beautiful up close. Oh yeah, and why do you say that? She asked curiously. I see it in your eyes. I know passion, and I see passion in you. Something my father taught me years ago, she stood up and walked over to me. Lassie Grant, she extended her hands to shake mine. Wolf it's nice to meet you, I extended my hand. Her hand was soft, and her smile lit up the room. A reporter walked up to me to ask if I would do a story on community dedication, I gave them my card. So are you a celebrity? I'm sorry, you don't look familiar to me she asked confused. Not at all. I am just a businessman, I stated, never taking my eyes off of her. So what kind of business are you in, if you don't mind me asking? Why don't you give me your business card and we can talk over dinner, I said. Wow, you hold no punches huh? I'm not too sure about that but I will see you later after the shoot. We can talk then, she stated with a flirty smile. I saw an engagement ring on her left hand, but I didn't let it distract me. I knew that whoever gave her that ring, she didn't claim, because her smile was too broad towards me. I didn't want to give up so quickly with her, but the white guy came up to her. Excuse me, Wolf was it? It was nice meeting you, and back to her passion she went just like that. Hey partner, Karen tapped my shoulder, found a new friend I see. Yeah she's nice with what she does, just look at her, I answered. Okay Mr. Lover Boy, we are here on business, let's look around. Have you seen anything you like? Karen asked, scanning the room. Do me a favor K, look around, find whoever deals with the sales here, and tell them that I want every photo Lacey Grant has done, I said. Okay, and who is Lacey Grant, may I ask? That's not important, just do it please and I'm out, I said as I headed toward the front door. Wait Wolf, where are you going we haven't decided anything. Karen shouted behind me. Yeah I did just get those photos, have them sent to the uptown office no matter the price. I have some business to take care of. Any other pictures you think we can use, buy them. Text me when they get to the shop, I'm out. Pete caught up to me at the front door, and he didn't question why the quick exit out of the exhibit. As we were waiting for my driver, a sexy piece, in the blue dress approached me. I let her down easy, and told Pete to take her number for me. My mind was on Lacey Grant. Just when my driver was opening the door the white guy with dirty sneakers called me, Hey Wolf. He was out of breath, and he handed me a business card. I took the card and smiled, Pete just looked at me, and shook his head. The card said, Lacey Grant, freelance photographer and her business phone number. I flipped the card over she wrote her cell number on the back. I hopped in the back of my truck, and sat there. A knock on my window brought me out my thoughts. I looked up to see Sash and Pete standing there. Sash was another business associate of mine. We hustled together on the streets back in the day. When I opened my third shop, I proposed for him to go and learn how to cut hair. It was like shoving food down a baby's throat, but he did it, and was great at it. He actually mastered it, and now he was my lead barber at the uptown shop. Sash is one of the smartest dudes that I know. The streets call him pretty boy. His eyes were green and his workouts at the gym gave him a cut-up body that women adored. Sash was a player at heart. He moved through more women than tampons. But he's one of the best barbers on my team. His clientele outbeats any other barber I have no doubt. I keep Sash close to me because he knows what the street wants, and most of our clients range from the ages of 18 to 35. Clients waits hours for Sash if they have to. I have watched it for myself, so with him bringing in so much money, I keep him close to me. Big Wolf, 
Sash spoke as we fist bump each other. Wolf, wolf, Pete chanted as he went straight to my refrigerator. So what's up with this situation? I asked curiously as they climbed in my truck. Sash and Pete filled me on what was going on at the downtown store. They told me the cameras caught one of our barbers stealing inventory from the stockroom. Things like toilet tissue and rags, small things, but he's doing it often, and they told me they fired him. Now, we're waiting on two guys they're going to interview to fill in his position. I was in deep thought about this, and I knew the young cat they were talking about. The streets called him Man Man. I believe he just had a baby, I know I gave him a thousand dollar gift certificate for his baby shower. I was invited to it, but couldn't attend it. I was shocked to hear this about Man Man. He seemed like a good kid. I didn't share with Sash and Pete that I was going to go Man Man myself. I need to find out why did he feel he had to lose his job over a petty theft? After we spoke a little more longer, they left me alone to my thoughts. Lacey was one freaky woman and I loved it. When you look at her, she seems so innocent. So focused, and she really is, but what she serves up in the bedroom, outbeat any woman I ever came across. Our escapades were great but my heart wanted more. I'm 41 years old now, and time is ticking. I wanted to have children, and start my life with someone. Lacey would be the only woman that I would do that with. But, she is all caught up in her situation right now, which keeps me in the street, and my options open to other women. China texted me again, and this time I responded. We agreed to meet at Leonard's. It was a popular bar lounge in the village. That cabin love is always a good getaway with Lacey. But that city life is what I know, and love. So to hit the street was always a good feeling. I sent Karen a text to fill her in, and see what she knew about Man Man. I told her to get me his address, and any info about him. I was going to pay him a visit when I get a chance. I made it to Leonard's before China. Everyone in there knows me, so I have my own table always reserved when I come in. The hostess at the door tonight was Jessica. She was young but cute. I know she has a crush on me, because she gets clumsy, and nervous whenever I come into her presence. When she walked me to my table I told her I was waiting for a friend. I gave her $50 tip. She was used to my good mannerism, and grateful from the look on her face. When she walked off I couldn't help but look at her ass. It was tight and round. She was too young for my taste though. But if I was 10 years younger, I would hit that just because. A waiter came over quickly for my drink order, and I ordered a bottle. Then told him to keep my tab running for the night. China likes expensive things, so I was going to cater to her once tonight, since I had been dodging her for a couple of weeks. I couldn't get the thoughts of Lacey out of my mind, I missed her already. But I'm not going to go against the code and call her. She knows to reach out to me when she wants to see me. I am surprised that she didn't text me to let me know she was safe. That's not like her. I guess something came up. My thoughts shifted over to the new shop we were opening up on the south side. I had to get Karen to upset several meetings, so we can have the construction companies finish up, in order to pass our state inspection. Chem is getting out next month, and with the new shop opening up, I might have to hire an assistant on a temporary basis. Just as the waitress came back with the bottle, I spotted China come through the door strutting like she owned the joint, looking bad as hell. I forget how sexy China is sometimes. The mini skirt showing all of her sexy thick legs, covered in black fishnet stockings, was enough to make any man look at her no matter if he was gay or straight. She has natural straight black hair that hung down her back with a bang in the front. Her face was round, and her lips was fuller than mine's. She was drop-dead gorgeous. I'm going to enjoy her tonight. After banging China out real good back at my place, I got up to check my messages. I left her in the bed sleeping, and I still hadn't heard from Lacey yet. I returned a few calls, and started to unpack my bag. I saw an unfamiliar envelope at the bottom of my bag. In neat writing the front of envelope read Wolf in black marker. I opened it slowly, and began to read it. Wolf, this is the saddest thing I had to do since I buried my father. The joy you have given me in the past six months, I couldn't describe in one word. The love that you give me is priceless. When I am in your presence, the whole world is closed to me. You're on my thoughts daily, I breathe your scent even when you're not around. Your gentleness and unique and honest to me, every part of me wants to pack up me and shy Anne's things and run straight into your arms. But I can't do that now. It's unfair to continue to love you only halfway. I know your life doesn't stop for me, but our feelings are deeper than I was expecting. Because of my situation, too many people can get hurt from this. 
If I continue to see you as we do, I'm afraid that I am going to make unproductive choices only using my heart and not my head. We are in deep, but not deep enough that we can't save ourselves a bunch of pain if we don't end this now. I know it was wrong to agree to meet this weekend and not just tell you this face to face. But I was selfish, I and wanted to have one last time. I apologize for that, I really do. My intentions were to never hurt you wolf. When it comes to me, you are everything I ever wanted and desired. But for Cheyenne, it's not and as a mother, I must consider her feelings in this too. I have been deceitful in ways that I never thought was in me, but you make me weak. You brought my defenses down, and I trust you as much as I love you. My heart is aching over this wolf, please believe me. You deserve a woman that can give you all of her and move on in your life. I don't want you to sit around, while I am still trying to figure things out. It's not fair to you. I know women who would die to have a man like you in their life, it pains for me to say that, but it's the truth. I know you are probably going to hate me for doing this. Please know that I didn't know any other way on how to do this. I can't look you in your face, and tell you this, I am falling in love with you wolf. It's best to part our ways now baby, so that this pain don't continue to stir in me. My life will never be the same without you wolf, never. And although you won't be around, you will always be in my thoughts. Lacey. I crumbled the letter up and swiped my dining room table with everything on it. The feelings that were in me couldn't be contained. My first thought was to call her ass up and talk to her. My second thought was to get in my truck and head over to her house and knock on her door. I was pissed off, but none of that was going to make this situation right. My heart was hurting and this is why I never get my feelings caught up with females. I don't know what I was expecting, I guess I thought she would just up and leave her situation. Thoughts corroded my mind and nothing was sitting well with me. What the fuck is she thinking, it's other ways we can do this. I took some breaths, took a bottle of water out of the refrigerator and sat down. I didn't think of this as ending, I knew she was acting funny at the cabin but I thought it was about her family. I should have addressed it more. I should have not left that cabin until the lacy I know came back emotionally. But my pride and code stopped that. My own made up rules of the street prevented me to be open and talk to her about her behavior. I heard movement from my bedroom, I forgot China was here. Hey you. China said as she stood butt ass naked at the kitchen door. She is sexy as hell. I didn't respond. Wolf what the hell is the matter with you? China snapped. She looked at the stuff on the floor and the crumbled up letter, then looked on my face. But I didn't respond. I blinked, and saw Lacey standing there, and had to take a sip of water. Oh, so now the cat got your fucking tongue? China spat. I wanted to tell China to get the fuck out. I wanted to yell at her like she was lacy. I wanted to her to gather up her shit and go, call my driver to pick her ass up. I wanted to be alone in my thoughts. Instead I put the water down and motioned for her to come to me. She did. I pulled down my sweat pants and she knew it was time for her to suck me hard. The hot feeling of her mouth, with the long strokes of her hand was getting the job done. I didn't want to think about Lacey now. I wanted to erase her out my mind completely. Once I was fully erect, I pulled out of her mouth, and pulled her up. I pushed her over the table face down ass up, licked my two fingers to make her wet enough for me to enter her, and stuck my dick in her from behind. I was pounding China out of full frustration. I didn't want this to be her, I wanted it to be Lacey. I pounded harder. The moans that were coming from China, I could barely hear over the frustration I was feeling in my heart. China was a freak. She liked shit like this, she thought it was about her. I slapped her fat ass, and she screeched in enjoyment. I was angry, and China's pussy was feeling my wrath. It was feeling good physically but mentally I was fucked up. As I felt myself coming I pulled my dick out, and came all over her ass. My legs were weak. I gathered myself up, and went to the bathroom. When I came out, China was fully dressed on her way out the door. I didn't stop her, she looked at me with evil eyes and slammed my front door. I saw the letter that I crumpled up opened and lying on the table. I didn't give a fuck about her feelings at this point. I went to the bar, and poured myself a drink. It was early, but fuck it. There is no rules to drinking, so I drank until I passed out. I woke up with my head pounding, and Karen standing over me with a confused look on her face. The crumbled letter in her right hand, I was laying across my couch too sick to get up. So, you and camera girl got this serious. Now you all in your feelings about this letter, Karen stated like a mother scolding her child. I grabbed both my temples and tried to rub her out of existence. 
You look a mess wolf, Karen said while walking away toward my bathroom. Then she walked to the kitchen. The clicking of her heels on my hardwood floor almost made me want to throw up. Try sitting up, and take these, she instructed pushing a bottle of cold water in my direction, with two extra strength etc. I smelled coffee brewing. I sat up swallowed both pills in one gulp then laid back down. Karen sat down on my coffee table directly in front of me. Her hands was folded like I was kid in the principal's office. I don't want to hear this shit right now Karen, I'm not in the mood I stated then closed my eyes. Karen didn't respond she got up went to the kitchen, and returned with my favorite coffee mug that I never use. Here, sit up and drink this, she ordered placing the coffee in front of me. I sat up, and took a sip then almost spit it out, what the fuck is this K? It's black coffee, drink the whole cup nice and slow. This with the combination of Excedrin will take that headache away quick, and then I'll make you a bagel so you can get rid of that headache. She sounded like my mother for a moment. I looked at her with exasperation and did as she instructed. I somehow felt a pinch of relief, then I did five minutes ago. About time I finished telling you, what you need to hear. That headache should be gone, Karen said as she sat in front of me. I was sipping the nasty beverage like she wasn't sitting there trying to ignore her. Wolf we cool, and you know I love you like cooked food, but I told you not deal with that female because of her situation. I saw it the first day at the gallery. She was different. Not your usual cup of tea. I bit my bottom lip not wanting to hear what Karen was saying. I know her truth was real, but I had no choice but to listen. Besides this banging headache, I was in a dangerous emotional state of mind. I needed guidance on this. Listen, you know that I'm the last person in this world to tell you what to do. You know this, but I'm a woman, and camera girl wasn't about the glamour life. She wasn't these hungry hoes out here looking for the next dude to take care of her finances. She's beautiful, and talented, driven and attached in a situation that you clearly knew about. Karen paused then continued, Wolf, chicks like camera girl, are not impressed by dudes like you my friend, and that is what really attracted you to her, beside the beauty she expels on the outside. I stared at the floor, and took another sip of my coffee. I'm going to be completely honest with you Wolf, because I'm your friend, and because I love you. You wanted to conquer her like all the other women, you set out to get her because your arrogance, and pride thought that you could pull it off like all the rest. And with all the warning signs, you didn't want to listen to me, Karen said confidently. I looked her in the eyes now. Yeah, I know you're mad, and pissed off now, but I see my friend for the first time in his life hurt, big wolf that the streets know and respects. You're hurting because this one you didn't win, Karen said. I took a deep breath, my headache was definitely getting better, and I pushed back and sat back on the couch looking straight ahead in my own zone. Wolf there is plenty of women out here, and I know you that but for some reason we want what we can't have. I read this letter, as fucked up as it may seem that woman spoke her truth in it, she has a daughter to think about this is bigger than your sex life my friend. It's not about the sex anymore k, I'm feeling her period, I stately slowly, my head feeling like slow drums was beating inside of it. Exactly. Now you're feeling her, but the sex was the first impulse. When she served you better than your expectations, you wind up here in this broken place. I took a deep breath, and another sip of coffee. It felt like every word Karen was speaking was curing my headache, come on wolf, you know emotions, and feelings don't come with instructions. You broke many hearts in your life, and now you're at the other end of it. Karma's a bitch sometimes my friend, she said empathically. Now what? I asked. Now you sit in these feelings, feel what you got to feel. We call you wolf, not Jesus, even he endured pain on this earth, Karen said with a chuckle. I had to smile at that one. Then you can get off your sexy black ass, and get back in the game man. You have businesses to run, and people who depend on you. Kem will be out soon. That's a new chapter in life. Just let this be a lesson learned. I sat the finished mug and saucer down on the coffee table, and folded my hands in front of me. Wolf she loves you, I believe she does. But you know that love is an emotion. You can't live on that alone. Other elements do come into play. Listen she let you go, you know the saying, if she comes back then she's yours hands down. But for now life must go on, we got a lot to do friend. As much as I wanted to shut Karen out, I knew she was telling me the truth and it hurt. My arrogance and pride put me in this position. When you have money you feel invisible, I have been so used to getting my way with women, Lacey shocked my system. I don't have children I could never understand the love she has for her daughter, I don't know her whole story. 
I love her and that's a fact but I know that I'm a man with great responsibilities and as much as my heart hurt I got to let this burn and keep moving. Lacey made her decision, I have to respect that and keep moving, I couldn't let this distract me from what I have going on. You okay there friend? Karen asked as I came out of my deep thought. I'm good Kay, thanks for always having my back for real. You're right, I got shit to do, if she wants me she know where I'm at let's just hope it's not too late. That's the strength I know talking now, when does your cleaning lady come this place is a mess. It's on the calendar in the kitchen, if it's not today call the cleaning company have them send someone as soon as possible please, I said. Yes sir, Karen said as she stood up. I started to get up from the couch slowly, your head is getting better right, Karen said with a smile. Yeah man, you are a genius K. I'm going to take a hot shower can you hook up a bagel for me too I need something on my stomach, I asked. You want me to scratch your ass too? Karen said rolling her eyes. Nah I got that, I chuckled as I walked to the bathroom. And hurry up, we got business to tend to, Karen yelled behind me. After my shower, I felt much better I wasn't 100% but I was much better. I owed Karen real big for nursing me back. Some of the words Lacey wrote in the letter haunted my thoughts, but I didn't let them overtake me. Karen had my bagel ready when I came out fully dressed. We sat down and filled me in on everything. Karen assured me that all the shops was running smoothly, our profits are high and more and more customers are hearing about us since the billboard downtown was put up. That deal came from God, the councilman in my district made me a proposal that I couldn't deny. One of the agreements was that the billboard of my shops with each shop address and contact on there. That lead me to open up this shop on the south side, it's not the wealthy side of town and we will shave off the price a couple of dollars because of the neighborhood, and we will give students an additional 10% off if they bring in any grade over a 90 in any major subject. It was our way of motivating education. I usually visited each shop a couple of times a week, besides checking the books, and talking to my lead barbers about any issues, I always spoke with my customers. I engaged in the public. My father taught me that was important to do. You never get too big in life that you forget, that if someone cut you, you will bleed blood just like anyone else. Those values he taught me never left. Karen didn't have a lot to say about Man Man. She gave me the same information that Sash and Pete did, but she did give me his home address. Once I left my crib, I took my BMW out my garage. I wanted to drive today. I needed to clear my mind, and listen to some music. I made a decision to not think about Lacey, I knew if I did, I would need to see her, and that was not an option. She made her decision, and it wasn't me. I pulled up in front of the address that Karen gave me to Man Man. The house was old, some siding was coming off of the house, and the front yard had a grill, and white chair sitting out. The garden on the left, looked as if someone was taking care of it. The green fence could use a paint job. I walked up and knocked on the door. A young female came to the door holding a baby, I assumed it was Man Man's girl. Can I help you she asked looking concerned. Hello, is Man Man here? Before she could answer Man Man came to the door, go back inside Gina, it's okay. Man Man was tall and skinny. He looked like a ball player. He needed a haircut, and he seemed like he was expecting me. He showed no fear but couldn't look me in the eye. Seemed like you were expecting me, I said to him. Not really, he stated dryly. We went to stand in front of my car. He was eyeing the car like it was a naked woman. Never be impressed by another man's possessions, it's all perishable, I said to him as my father used to say to me when I younger. Man man didn't reply. So you want to tell me what happened at the shop, and why you're not there anymore? I cut to chase. Man man took a deep breath, and put his hands in his pockets while his head was down, the cameras have you clearly taking these things, but why those things I'm confused man. I folded my arms this time. Man man was looking at my new sneakers hard, he slowly peeped my whole outfit before looking at me in my eyes, shit is rough out here wolf, money is tight. I picked up a second job washing cars, and needed some stuff to keep my work flowing, that's my word, man man looked toward his front door. What's going on with your clients at the shop? I asked. I mean, I have clients, but a lot of them aren't tipping so well. After paying for my booth, it just seems like since the baby came it's never enough. Shit is hard out here wolf, he sounded agitated. I was in deep thought, when I looked at his house, I saw his girl looking out the window, I could go back in these streets again and start slinging, but I got a baby now man. I'm trying to live my life right now, but it just seems like nothing is enough. The more I work the less there is, he started pacing back and forth slowly. 
I saw the frustration in this young kid, I saw his struggle from where he lived, the envy in his eyes, and the sadness in his girl's face. I respect you Wolf. I do, and I'm sorry man for stealing from you. It was fucked up for me to do, but I didn't have a choice. Now I'm even more fucked up now because not having my job at the shop just made shit worse for me, his head was down. Man man, always look a man in the eye when you speak to him, I said sternly. He slowly looked at me in my eye, rather right, or wrong, never cut the hand that feeds you boy, never. I'm at the shop at least once, or twice a week, you should have spoken to me about this. He didn't respond. I took a deep breath, I checked you out before I came here, I hear you a good kid, and hard working. I know your grandmother died last yay, R and you have been in charge of paying everything. I know you owe the corner store on Brent Street $50 dollar credit. I also know that you go to church every Sunday with your baby and girl. I know that you help out at the Veterans Center, volunteering when you're not working, because your uncle died in the war. He looked me in the eyes this time, and didn't look away. You seem like a smart kid man man, and I see potential in you. I want you to come to South Side Shop tomorrow at noon, and bring your girl and baby with you. Is it something I should be worried about, man man said confused. You'll know when you get there, don't come one minute late. And if you ever take anything else from me, or any of my shops again both your hands will get chopped off, my tone was serious. Man man looked at me, and nodded his head. When you need something in this world, trust to ask for it, it can save you a lot of trouble. He nodded his head again. Noon tomorrow, I said and turned around to my car. I'd wolf, he said as he started walking away. I took one last look at his house, and saw his girl standing in the doorway with the baby in her arms. I stopped and went in my pockets, hey man man, come here real quick. He started walking back to me, I handed him a hundred dollar bill, buy your baby some pampers and milk. He reached for the money, and took it slowly. He was confused, but in need, grateful and hurt. Thanks Wolf. Noon, not a minute late, I said opening my car door. Hey everyone, it's Author Everlast. I want to thank you for listening to Let Me Tell Your Story podcast. Tune in for the next episode. God bless and be safe.